So moving into chapter 11, we're going to start talking about the ankle and the foot. And like we've done in other chapters, we're going to start with the osteology. So there is a little um, blurb about the gait cycle in the chapter, and you will not be responsible for the gait cycle in this class. In um, one of your other classes, you will go into the gait cycle extensively, <laughs> probably more than one of your other classes. <clears throat> but we're going to set it aside for now and um, we're going to talk about other things having to do with the foot and ankle. So for the osteology part, as usual, <laughs> I want you to be able to identify the bony landmarks of the foot and ankle in their anatomical position to one another. Um, I want you to um, define the terminology that's unique to the foot and ankle. So some of the motions have um, unique names in the foot and ankle and some of the um, surface designations. And um, I want you to be able to identify the primary functions of the foot and ankle. So in terms of terminology, the plantar aspect of the foot refers to the sole or the bottom of the foot. And the dorsal aspect refers to the top or superior portion of the foot. So it differs a little bit in what we've talked about with dorsal and ventral, dorsal being posterior and ventral being anterior. Um, in this case, the dorsal is the, um, the top of your foot. Um, rear foot, midfoot, and forefoot are commonly used clinical terms that indicate specific areas of the feet. And we'll talk about those with respect to the bones that are in each of those. Occasionally, you will hear someone say hind foot instead of rear foot, but rear foot, midfoot, and forefoot are the commonly used clinical terms. So the foot and ankle, they um, all of the joints in the foot and ankle provide triplanar movement. They absorb shock. They provide adaptation to ground surfaces and they provide a stable base that we can balance on. So that's all hugely functionally important. Um, and all the different little joints contribute to that motion. So when we're talking about the ankle, we're usually just talking about the um, articulation between the tibia, fibula, and the talus. And um, there's just one degree of freedom of motion there. But then once we add in all the other little joints in the foot, we get quite a lot of movement in all three planes. So pretty cool, right? So the distal tibia and fibula, um, the tibia and fibula are bound tightly together by the interosseous membrane and they form this mortise and tenon joint with the talus. And um, so it's a very stable joint and that's good because we stand around on it all day, right? So the medial malleolus is the medial projection of bone from the distal tibia. Um, very easily palpable on, you palpate it right now on your own ankle. The lateral malleolus um, is the, the distal fibula and it projects laterally. So, you know, in layman's terms, we call these your ankle bones. Um, they're very easily palpable. Both of the malleoli serve as proximal attachments for collateral ligaments of the ankle. And they also serve as pulleys for the muscle tendons. So um, a lot of our um, ankle mus extrinsic foot muscles and ankle muscles go around the malleoli and that changes the line of pull of the muscle or it influences the line of pull of the muscle to determine what action the muscle is gonna have. So the malleola are super important functionally, um, their location and the tendons that um, encircle them. The fibular notch is the concave portion of the distal tibia that articulates with the fibula. It forms the distal tibiofibular joint. There's also a proximal tibiofibular joint um, where the um, proximal portion of the tibia and fibula articulate. Um, the distal tibiofibular joint is a firm articulation that allows very little gliding between the tibia and fibula because it has to stay tight to keep that mortise and tenon joint tight. Um, so that the tibia and fibula together form a stable socket that accepts the superior portion of the talus forming the talocrural joint. That's the name of the ankle. So it's a nice stable joint, which yay, we got to stand on it all day. We want that. 
So once we get down to the foot, there are three sets of bones. And they, they pretty much correspond to um, rear foot, midfoot, and forefoot. So the tarsals, I'm going to just draw a line. OK, the tarsals are those guys. <laughs> the metatarsals are this section. Draw my little arrows. And the phalanges are the toes, right? So the metatarsal phalangeal joints, you can think of them as the ball of your foot um, on the plantar aspect. Um, if you look at the top of your foot, the dorsal aspect, it, they're like your toe knuckles. You want to think of them that way. Um, so dividing, dividing those up, um, we have those three sets of bones. And we're going to talk about um, each set. Okay, so the tarsal bones, um, just like the carpals in the wrist, the tarsals do a lot of the motion of the foot. So the tarsal bones include the talus, the calcaneus, the navicular, and the cuboid, um, and also the medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiforms. The three cuneiforms form the transverse arch of the foot. So the actual structure of the bones has a lot to do with the shape of the arch. And we'll talk about the muscular and ligamentous contribution to that arch as well. So when you look um, at this aspect, um, the medial aspect, sorry, lateral aspect <laughs> of the foot, to turn my brain around there, um, the talus is the most superior part of the foot, and that's what articulates with that tibior, tibiofibular mortis joint. And so the talus is super important for um, the movement of the ankle. So I'm just going to, to outline the talus here. So there's a joint between, so this is the talus, there's this joint between the talus and the calcaneus, which is called the subtalar joint. It's a planar joint, so it glides, and it glides in different directions. Um, the calcaneus is where the um, big, beefy gastroc and soleus attach, and um, they're, the, they're the major muscles for plantar flexion, even though we have a lot of other ones that do plantar flexion as well. But that um, subtalar joint is part of the um, group of joints that contributes to foot motion. So the, um, the calcaneus is basically where everything hits the ground <laughs> because that's where we accept weight um, right on our heel. So um, at the end of the calcaneus, we have the calcaneal tuberosity, which is where all those muscles attach. Nice, right? So um, the navicular is on the medial side of the foot. The navicular tuberosity is easily palpable, as is the calcaneal tuberosity. The talus is easily palpable. Um, you can't palpate the articulating surface of the talus because it's inside the joint, but you can um, palpate it just inside the two malleoli. So um, the you can really you can palpate all of the um, tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges of the foot. So um, very easily palpable, which is great. So from medial to lateral, um, you have the medial cuneiform is the most medial. The intermediate is the second one in the middle of the of the three. The most lateral is the lateral cuneiform, and then um, lateral to that is the cuboid. Easy, right? So the talus, um, the trochlea of the talus is the dome-shaped superior portion that articulates with the tibia and fibula. Um, there are three facets on the plantar aspect for articulation with the calcaneus. Um, and the head of the talus, which is the um, most distal part, articulates with the navicular. So all of those joints um, are planar joints except for the um, talocrural joint, which is a hinge joint. 
Okay, so it does plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. On the calcaneus, the calcaneal tuberosity is the attachment of the Achilles tendon. Um, the three facets on the superior aspect of the calcaneus articulate with the talus at the subtalar joint. The sustentaculum talus is a medial projection of bone that serves as a shelf to support the talus, and it also serves as a pulley for a muscle tendon. So muscle tendon runs, runs along there. So you can palpate the sustentaculum talus, and um, we'll practice doing it in lab. So when you look at this right here, that's the sustentaculum talus, and um, it's palpable. Everything, almost everything in the foot is palpable, which that may, that's awesome. The midfoot, the navicular, the cuneiforms, and the cuboid, all palpable. The navicular tuberosity is a prominent medial projection of bone. It's the site of the distal attachment for the spring ligament and the tibialis posterior muscle. Um, the cuneiforms form the medial half of the transverse arch of the foot. So the shape of the bone is important in the arch of the foot. And the cuboid forms the lateral half of the transverse arch of the foot. So we have those little, little bones in the arch. I have some interesting cadaver pictures of this in one of the other um, PowerPoints. Um, the forefoot is the metatarsals and phalanges. So the metatarsals, all five metatarsals consist of a concave base at the proximal aspect, a shaft, and a convex head at the distal aspect. So the metatarsal heads, those are your toe knuckles, if you wanna think of them that way, or on the plantar aspect, they're the balls of your feet. So when you come up on your tiptoes, you're resting on your metatarsal heads. Um, the phalanges, there are 14 of them, there are two in the first digit and three in the other four digits. Um, so the big toe only has two, just like the thumb only has two. Um, all the phalanges have a concave base on the proximal aspect, a shaft, and a convex head. So even though these are tiny in comparison to the femur, they're considered long bones because of their configuration. 